Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show a quorum of members is present, that the meeting has been duly called, and that a notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. It is 6 o'clock. If you would, please stand with me as Mr. Hubert leads us in the invocation and Mr. Kidd in the Pledges of Allegiance. Thank you. Bow your heads. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day that we have. We are grateful for the completion of this school season, school year that we have had. We ask you to watch over us in this meeting and watch over our students this summer that they may have a good time and come, come back safely and that those who have graduated may be able to pursue their, their dreams and, and their desires. We ask you to watch over all of us this evening. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to see Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <clears throat> and thank you very much, Mr. Hubert. Mr. Kidd, welcome to the July board meeting. <laughs> Showed up yet because of the weather. Yeah. So we're going to skip that. Uh, it's fine. Okay. So we'll uh, start with item 2D due to probably some weather delays. Special board recognition for Destination Imagination Global Champions. Dr. Stockton. All right. Thank you very much. We have a, a number of <clears throat> special recognitions tonight that we're so excited about. Our first one, I'll invite uh, Dr. Caffrey from the Academy of Science Technology to come up and introduce our our recipients. <clears throat> Good evening, honorable members of the Conroe ISD Board of Trustees and Dr. Stockton. I want to thank you for the continued support of our students as they strive for excellence in academics, athletics, fine arts, robotics, and other UIL events. Students in Conroe ISD have accepted the challenge of increasingly high expectations and continue to show outstanding performance at the national and international levels. Recently, many destination imagination teams advanced to DI Global, held in Knoxville, Tennessee. In fact, several team earned place awards. At this time, it is my honor to introduce longtime DI mentor and sponsor, Mrs. Barbara Lohenberg. And I'd like to start out with a quote from Vince Lombardi, who said to a group of people one time, let me tell you what winning means. You're willing to go longer, work harder, and give more than anyone else. And that's exactly what this team did this year. It was their first year to advance to state, their first year to advance the globals, and they won the whole thing. So I would like to introduce all seven members. I will start with the three members that are here. We have Annie Tierney. Come on up. Louis <laughs> Girardi. Jesse Stobart. And then our members at they're all seniors, though some of them are already away at college and different things. We had Marie Robbins, Lewis. We had Matthew Liu, Mary Robbins, and Victoria Lee. Well, let's, let's do that one more time for another big round of applause. What is DI? Well, I'm not going to bore you with what is DI, but my husband kind of has it summed up. Anytime he faces a challenge and he's able to find a solution to that challenge in a cheap and inefficient manner, he always says, I DI'd it. <laughs> so these kids had DI'd it. But I think more than anything else, what Conroy ISD has done for these kids has given them life skills. As I was searching for a job, not a job, but I was looking at, you know, what is it that our employers are looking for? So I came across the Forbes article, and it said top five traits that employees want, need. Number one, 
was they wanted someone to be adaptable. They wanted them to be professional, willing to work with the group. And can you all say, were you willing to work within a group? Did you have to learn different ways to adapt working with a group? Yeah. Another thing, that they have to be, have motivation. They had to have confidence. And I wish you could have seen them even three years ago and until now. Three years ago, Luis, would you have gotten up and sang a whole song? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> and this year, they're all multi-talented. Not only are they members of the Academy of Science and Technology, but they also have talents in music and in art. So all of that also came through. So they have a lot of confidence and they're very motivated. The third skill they wanted was intellectual curiosity. Well, that's exactly what DI does. They problem solve and they learn different technical skills in order to solve this problem. Did you all learn new, new skills? Yes. <laughs> Louise made a really neat technical eye. They had to create something that would discover a clue. Louise, do you want to say what you made really quick? It was a light detector using a nail board. <laughs> okay, and then the fourth skill they wanted follow through. They wanted people that could take a project from the beginning to the end. And this is what I love about DI. As some, I just hang around with them. I am not allowed to give them any solutions. All I do is laugh and just ha kind of have a good time. It is all. <laughs> I do, don't I? It, <laughs> it is totally their idea from beginning to end. They have to solve that solution on their own. And I think this is what really sets DI apart from many other things. But as an employer, is that not what you want? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And then the last thing that time. was is time management. Um, they are teenagers, so we're still working on that one. They <laughs> still love to wait for the last the bus. minute. But they came through. Absolutely. I just have a couple of words. I don't kill myself with this microphone. I just want to say a couple of things. You know, around 1495, Leonardo da Vinci sketched out plans for a humanoid robot. You probably knew that, didn't you? Then in 1913, Henry Ford installed the world's first moving conveyor belt based assembly line in his car factory so that a Model T could be assembled in 93 minutes. Designing and building and programming and testing robots takes a combination of physics, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, structural engineering, mathematics, and computing. In some cases, even today, biology, medicine, chemistry might also be involved. A study of all these disciplines is what it takes to solve these deep posing problems. And we just, as a school board, want to say thank you for representing Conroe ISD and uh, congratulations on your global win. We appreciate you. and does something about it. These kids did something about it. So thank you all very much thank for allowing them to be successful. And thank you. Thank you. I sponsored DI one time. We didn't make it out of the school, much less out of district. But anyway. <laughs> Item 2E, Special District Recognition, Ambassador Awards, Custodial and Maintenance, Dr. Stock. Okay. Um, at this time, I'll int introduce our uh, director, Marshall Schrader. If you'll come up and introduce the recipients, please. And I, by the way, I want to I thank you and, and your departments. Uh, the last several weeks, if not the last five weeks, were very challenging in our school district. And yes. your departments, yourself, Dwight, you guys were up around the clock. Uh, making sure our schools were safe and, and ready to go for kids, and you did a great job. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
and it definitely was a team effort <laughs> by all means. Um, Mr. Husbands, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you tonight the Ambassador Award winners for the Maintenance Custodial Department. Uh, I, before I do that, I would like to announce or uh, introduce a couple of um, my administrative staff. And if you would please staff as I, uh, please stand as I introduce you. Uh, John Brown, <coughs> Mark Fries, uh, maintenance coordinators, Sydney Strong, and Rodney Shelton, custodi custodial coordinators, and Dwight Martin, assistant director of maintenance and custodial. Some of our award recipients are not able to make it tonight, uh, but we're going to go ahead and announce them anyway. Uh, Mr. Steve Gamble, who was not able to be with us tonight. Uh, Steve was hired in August of 2013. He works at the Woodlands High School in the athletic area. Does a great job, uh, has a wonderful attitude, and always has a great smile to go along with it. Uh, Mr. Jeff Smith, please come forward as I call your name. Jeff Smith, compliance technician, been with us since July of 2013. He's one of our compliance technicians that takes care of maintenance and permits for things such as fire, fire sprinklers, fire extinguishers, fire alarms, and elevators. Jeff always has a great attitude, team player, and is an asset to our organization. Absolutely. <laughs> From the North Custodial Department, Marion Reyes. Marion's been with us since March of 2001. She works days at Caney Creek High School. Um, Marion is a hard worker, great attitude, always willing to help wherever she's needed. <laughs> From the South Maintenance Department, Ben Giacona. Ben is a plumber with Conroe ISD. He's been with us since October of 2015. Ben is a quiet man who goes about his normal business day and just takes care of business every day. He's dependable, trustworthy, and hardworking. Very good. Mr. Oscar Guido. Uh, Oscar is a lead painter with Conroe. His hire date was July of 2015. Although Oscar's only been with us for a very short period of time, he's made a tremendous impact. Uh, he's taken our paint department and reduced our work orders by about 40% in less than about nine months. Wow. And one more from South Custodial, Mr. Remigio Monti, who can't be here tonight. Uh, he's actually taken treatments this afternoon. Uh, Remigio, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, he's loved and appreciated by his campus administrators. <coughs> He's faced cancer uh, the last year, and so he's one of those guys who worries more about his job than he worries about his own health. So, super nice guy. Um, he's he's uh, at his doctor's office this afternoon. So, thank you very much. Well, just a few words. Uh, first and foremost, if if everyone will relay to is it Remigio, uh, that both his uh, both him and his family are in our prayers and will be in our prayers tonight as he faces that battle. Uh, and I want to echo what Don said about this year. It's been an extremely challenging year, and on behalf of the board, we're uh, just so appreciative of your commitment to excellence uh, and what you do. I, I've actually. Uh, through my business recently had the opportunity to, to be in some other schools and other districts and until you actually see what other schools are like compared to what you do for us uh, you know it, it is it's, it's a big difference and it's amazing and I and we all very much appreciate uh, every role uh, that you play and in, in, in your striving for excellence and I very much appreciate you so uh, thank you again and again relay our thoughts and prayers to the family Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. We appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We Thank you. We appreciate you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank
Okay, now we're going to jump back up to item 2A, special board recognition, 2016 UIL Class 6A Boys Shot Put State Champion. Dr. Stockton. At this time, I'll ask Jill Malpass Hauser to uh, come to the podium to introduce our champions. Thank you, President Husbands, Dr. Stockton, and members of the board. It is my honor to represent the Woodlands High School and introduce our coaches to you so that they can introduce our champions of Coach Juris Green. Coach Gary Medor and Coach Noel Hansen, please come forward. Mr. Husband, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, it's, I believe it was a year ago at this meeting we were here introducing two fantastic athletes and now we have a third. Um, I'm not going to be doing a lot of the talking this time, which some of you may be quite happy about. <laughs> I, I, figure, I figure this year you ought to hear from the guy who actually makes it happen uh, from our thrower standpoint. He was a, uh, a coach I had the pleasure of introducing this past January at the Gulf Coast Scholastic Track Coaches Association where he was voted the assistant coach of the year. Um, he's a guy whose coaching record I would put up against any other throws coach in the state of Texas, if not the country. Uh, he's a fantastic coach, uh, Gary Medor. Thank you, Juris. Uh, Mr. Husbands, member of the board, and Dr. Stockton, uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, recognize our athletes from uh, phenomenal, phenomenal track season. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start a little bit uh, about uh, Adrian, and uh, it's it's a, an honor for me to coach Adrian Hippery the third. And mm -hmm. uh, as we all know, with Trip, and um, we were here last year. Uh, for the state uh, shot put in discus title um, and appreciate that opportunity. From, from that point on, Trip went and qualified for the uh, World Youth Trials, uh, World Youth Games, and that was going to be, that was hosted in Cali, Columbia. Uh, Adrian, or Trip, uh, went, went to Columbia and uh, won the World Youth Games uh, shot put uh, where he threw uh, 72 two and a quarter uh, that's also an American record um, it was a phenomenal opportunity for him to go represent the United States uh, for uh, for us and and represent Conor ISD um, this season has been a been a great season for him and for our entire track team uh, trip uh, started off uh, throwing 70 feet at Oak Ridge which uh, 70 feet is a is a number in the shot put that is a uh, a phenomenal number. Um, right now, uh, he's actually number seven all time on uh, the all time list as far as high school throwers, um, and that is uh, that's an amazing number. Um, I went straight Jesuit, and, and uh, Adrian eclipsed a mark in a, a, an athlete, uh, uh, Michael Carter, who is uh, holds a national high school record um, of 81 feet three inches. Um, he beat. Uh, uh, Adrian set a new meet record at Jesuit, 70 feet 3 inches. Um, as far as uh, the, the state meet, uh, Adrian went to the state meet. Uh, he, he went to the, I'm sorry, the Texas Relays, uh, was a champion in, in the Texas Relays and in the, uh, in the shot and the discus. Moved to the state meet and Adrian moved his personal record to 71 feet. Um, was just a a, a wonderful throw. Uh, he was he led by about eight feet, so eight feet, maybe, maybe even a little more than eight feet. Uh, in the shot put, that's that's a phenomenal distance. Actually, it was nine feet. Um, um, he went the following weekend to the meet of champions uh, through seventy one eleven, um, and that's where they gather all state champions in Texas from private schools and and every. Every class, uh, he moved his his personal record to 7111. Uh, we went this weekend to Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, and it was the uh, New Balance Outdoors National Championship for all high school athletes, and it's a phenomenal meet hosted by New Balance. And uh, there's three juniors right now currently in in the country that uh, are leading the country. Um, 
kid from Pennsylvania, 74 foot uh, three inches, I think. Um, and their kid from California, who's over 70 feet, and then Adrian. Um, competing uh, as in trips, fine fashion, we get to the last throw. Uh, three guys over 70 feet, which is phenomenal at a high school track meet. Um, Adrian, with his last throw, had he had clips the, the meet record. The meet record was taken from him. In his last throw, he, he threw 73, five and a quarter. Wow. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you Adrian Pippery, Pippery the third. And uh, members of the board, uh, I wasn't here last year, but I know the first person I'm going to introduce tonight, uh, you had the opportunity to meet last year. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to, before we start, just uh, mention how difficult it is in the state of Texas to not only win a state championship, but to win two state championships. Uh, there are a lot of things that go into it. Uh, the competition you face in our state is tremendous. You have to be able to uh, match those people athletically. And then you have to be able to uh, do it on the day when we are called to do it. And uh, the first person I want to introduce is Eliana Long. Eliana Long won state last year. Uh, this year she came back and jumped uh, that stage leading uh, height at uh, 5'10 uh, early. Uh, later on during the season she matched that at 5'10 and uh, actually set a school record at 5'10 and a half. She was the best jumper at, at, in the state. She won her fourth uh, district title in a row. She uh, won regionals, won area, and went to the state meet and uh, was the best jumper, undoubtedly. And she sure enough came back with the second state championship. The other thing I've always liked about <coughs> Eliana is the fact that she's a great athlete, but she also is a, an amazing runner as well. Last year she competed on our 4 by 2 relay, our 4 by 4 relay at the state meet. This year she twinged a hamstring right towards the end and she only competed <laughs> in the 4 by 4 I mean, excuse me, the 4 by 2 So. Anyway, I, I'm just really uh, proud. I've been so blessed to coach her. Uh, she, she is an amazing person. I learned a lot uh, about coaching, about uh, how to coach an event from the fact that she was extremely knowledgeable. And I think together we, uh, we, we did some really good stuff. But most of it was her and uh, just how gracious she was. We would go to meets and the athletes, she was so gracious to them throughout the competitions. Everybody loves her. Uh, the coaching staff loved her, teammates loved her, and it was just a really, really honor to uh, to have somebody for two years, really for four years, but somebody who uh, was just a lot of fun to coach. So, Eliana Long, I'd like to come a step up, please. <laughs> Eliana will be attending uh, Brigham Young in, in, the, in the fall as a jumper, so I know she'll do great things up there. And our second athlete, our state champion, uh, is Tessa Impaji. And uh, <clears throat> Tessa is going to be going to the University of Texas uh, next year to jump as well. And the thing is, I want to mention this too, kind of the way that, that state competitions go. <laughs> state competitions go, especially with jumpers, for whatever reason, so you get around a bunch of good jumpers, and the competitions tend to go like this. They'll kind of go back and forth as it did, as Coach was, Medor was saying about the shot the competition. But almost invariably, uh, after your first three jumps, they put you in inverse order. So the eighth jumper goes first, and the, and the, and the person who's in the lead after three jumps jumps last. And boy, as the, as the jumps narrow down, the people behind start jumping, and then they kind of switch places. And it happens a lot. And, and Tessa, over the course of her career, has been on both sides of that. She's passed people on the last jump, and she's been passed on the last jump. And this year at the state meeting in the long jump, that didn't happen. She was the best jumper uh, throughout the competition. She set a school record and had the state's best, uh, her, the, she won the state on her last jump at 19 feet, nine inches, and just had an amazing career as well. She ran on our four by two at state and an amazing, uh, amazing athlete who I think will do wonderful things at the University of Texas. So Tessa Impaji, come up. Say 
had a quick couple quick words. I just want to say, I don't care who you are, that's impressive. You guys, <laughs> that, that, that's impressive. You guys are not only winning on the state level, but a national level. And I know how big and strong they're making them in Texas nowadays. And you guys are doing above and beyond that. You guys are spending hours and hours on the track and in the gym. I know you're drinking your milk and spending days in the gym. So, so you guys are representing the district well. So we, we really appreciate how well you guys are representing us here. Fine athletes as well as students. So great job. Much success in the future. UT. So you guys continue to do what you do. And um, I mean, continue to outperform everyone. I mean, that's, that's impressive. That's very impressive. You guys are doing well. So great job. Appreciate everything you do. Okay. Since no one signed up for citizen participation, we will uh, continue on to item number three, consent agenda. I've had no request to remove any items. Is that still so? Yes, sir. Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Thank you very much. Don't we need a motion in a second? <laughs> for the consent, for the consent. agenda? For the consent okay. Agenda. All right. Do I have a motion? No. I move we accept. <laughs> do I have a second? As presented. Second. <laughs> Y'all want to do it again? Let's vote. <laughs> all in favor? All against? Okay. All right. This guy got that? appreciates that. <laughs> I was trying to set a record, and Mr. Sanders is trying to get in my way. <laughs> <laughs> Administration. you killing your dream. Item 4A. <laughs> killing my dream. We've got enough records we've celebrated. Capital tonight. Improvements <laughs> Update, Dr. Stockton. I don't know about you, but my hand still hurts from shaking his hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I warned him ahead of time, do not squeeze my hand. Do not hurt me. Oh, uh, let's see where we are. Uh, Capital Improvement. Um, Sorry, you Director Sorry. of Planning Construction, Easy Foster, please come up to the podium. Good evening, I'm President, I'm husbands, I'm members of the board. Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to update you, bring you some highlights of our capital improvements that are underway in the district uh, since we met last month. We'll start you out at the Woodlands High School, where we're uh, working on the girls' uh, locker room facilities. The uh, the new addition to that locker room is is complete. Uh, the work has transitioned since last month into the existing facility. Uh, where we are currently working on renovating the uh, what was formerly the girls' locker room addition. So we've expanded the capacity of the girls' locker room facilities to accommodate the population at the Woodlands High School. At our new high school, uh, that site is progressing well. Uh, we have had some, some difficult weather over the last uh, several weeks. But as you can see, uh, the, the very well-defined building pad that you could see in the, in the pictures last month is not quite so well defined because we have started work on the the slabs and the foundations things of that nature uh, the underground utilities the uh, plumbing the electrical things that that create the uh, the foundation of our building that job is still on schedule as we are maintaining uh, uh, weather uh, weather throughout the course of that job now at our 2016 campus life cycle uh, the major portion of this work is at Runyon Elementary where we're doing an air conditioning overhaul for that building so essentially everything that's above the ceiling in that school is being uh, removed and replaced this summer uh, last month we reported all the equipment had already been installed so the equipment is in place and is being connected and wired up a lot of the stands and props that you saw last month are now gone things are becoming connected uh, this project is tracking well uh, we look to have the the machines and everything operational uh, before the next board meeting next month uh, and it is on track to open uh, back for school uh, before the kids come back at Caney Creek High School, we are uh, replacing the roof of that building. Uh, so we are actually changing the colors here. So you can see the, uh, the tan colors of the major portions of the roof 
the the colored section of it, uh, which will mimic what we've got at Moorhead Junior High across the street, mm -hmm. is happening now uh, at the uh, the front door. So when you pull up to Candy Creek High School, the front doors will be will be uh, highlighted by the by the color group. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, we've been working at uh, Moorhead Stadium, where we've uh, replaced the turf under normal uh, not Moorhead, sorry, uh, Wood Forest Stadium, where we replaced the turf under normal life cycle. So you can see it, the, uh, the turf is, is complete. Now the work on the uh, normal maintenance item on the bleachers and hand rails of the sound system is what's underway at this point. That portion of the project is also on schedule. Moving on to our CTE and robotics project. Uh, we're at Caney Creek High School in Oak Ridge ninth grade. At Caney Creek, we're working on cosmetology, welding, construction trades, and robotics labs. Uh, those projects are progressing well. Uh, the systems are in place. The, uh, the, the walls, the infrastructure are going in for those. They are on schedule, and they're scheduled to open for school in August. At Oak Ridge ninth grade, where it's a welding lab, uh, that project is in the same state as at, at Caney Creek High School, and that project is on schedule and scheduled for opening uh, when school resumes in August. Moving on to Grangerland Intermediate, where we're adding some classroom space uh, to that school. That project is progressing well. The, uh, we're adding a county-required uh, fire lane access around the exterior of that building, which is the uh, large uh, clear dirt path you see in this picture. And the, uh, the foundation structures for that building have been installed over the past week. So we expect uh, over the next month, the concrete uh, grade beam slab and uh, right around the board meeting time for July, the steel for that structure should be delivered and begin being erected. Then at uh, our new elementary school in the Oak Ridge feeder zone, Flex 17, uh, that project is also progressing well. The uh, foundations are in progress on that one. You can see some of the equipment <coughs> and work taking place now. Uh, this project, I'm happy to report, is on schedule. Uh, weather has not been as much of a factor since we got the uh, building pad built, uh, so work has been able to progress, and it is scheduled for opening in August of 2017. And that is our update. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Item 5A, consider approval of 2016 <coughs> teacher hiring schedule, Dr. Stockton. All right, this time I'll invite our CFO, Darren Rice, to the podium. And um, as Darren comes up, we are in a good position tonight as we present the um, salary increases to the board. We're in a position that we're going to be able to offer a strong raise. Uh, we also have a solid budget for next year which is always good news. And at the same time, we're going to be able to stick some money away with a legislative session coming up uh, with some uncertainty in the economy. Um, we'll be able to do all three of those things in this budget. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. President Husbands, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, it is my pleasure this evening to recommend that the Board of Trustees approve the 2016-2017 teacher hiring schedule, employee raises, and stipends. CISD administration believes that early approval of the teacher hiring schedule, raises and stipends will improve recruitment and retention of district employees. This proposal was recommended by the TASB Compensation Group. It includes a 3% general pay increase on the midpoint with targeted adjustments for identified areas. CISD administration believes that this proposal will keep CISD competitive with peer school districts in the Houston area. Under this plan, the starting teacher salary is $51,500. Existing teachers will re receive a $1,650 raise and more. <clears throat> this proposal also includes adjustments to teachers with seven years experience or more, ranging anywhere from $100 to $1,300. It also includes equity adjustments for our police and auxiliary departments and stipend increases in the bilingual, special ed, and fine arts departments. At this time, I request your approval. Thank you very much, Mr. Rice. Do I have a motion? I so move that we approve as presented. Second. A motion is second. Any discussion or questions? I got a question. Go ahead, uh, Mr. No. Proceed. Mr. Sanders. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I just have a question on as I was reviewing it. Just a clarity is really all it okay. is between salary and stipends. So if I, when I look on there, if I see a a scenario where an area is being, it's a 187 day contract, for example, 187 day contract and then a stipend and a 202 and a stipend. Is it, is it my understanding that their salary is for the 202, is it 
they get paid 202 days, two days. Mm -hmm. and then a stipend of whatever that stipend is? On top of that, yes, sir. Okay. Thank it's in you. addition to. Okay. My question was just, do you have a calculated total? Yeah, the, the, the total amount of this raise is uh, 11 million, a little over 11 seventh. That's per individual, right? <laughs> <laughs> What do we do? With my job in a <laughs> um, Good deal. Even if I'm not going. I, I already expressed this, this uh, previously when speaking with doctors, talked to about this, but I would like to formally request that at the same time that we're looking at health insurance, we're looking at, at teacher pay raises and across the board, that we look at this at a holistic view because um, having it piecemeal like this with doing health insurance at one time and um, pay raises at the other and um, there was a disconnect personally for me with what we approved with health increases that some of our raises don't cover all of the health increase and so some of our staff are actually going to be getting somewhat of a pay cut due to the health insurance increase and I agree with what we did I'm not questioning what we did but Personally, I would like it if we get all the information at once and are approving all at the same time rather than pay increase this month and health insurance in previous months. So, don't they go in and effect at the yes. same time? Don't they yes. have the same effective well, date? Well, we yes. Didn't vote on them at the same time. But we didn't vote on them at the same time, so I don't feel like, at least personally, I got a whole picture of what we were deciding with when we look at the budget piece. wasn't that something when the something? workshop yes okay. but the actual dollar figures of what that worked out to be I think I'd like to see and, it all and, and let the record all. show that that the the, the any time that there's a it is an increase in the health insurance that was not covered by a teachers raise this year it was not for the employees health insurance okay I mean it was for the dependents. Yeah, it was for the dependents. Right. It, it's and only one a, subset, and it's a very small group. I uh, think, it, but, but what I'm saying is you got to clarify that they did not have an employee increase in health insurance that would not be covered by this raise. Correct. Okay? It was... It was, it was if they had dependents. coverage for any dependents or spouse. Dependents. Correct. And so that, that's, you know, but anyway, Correct. Your, your point. So. And, and just, for, yeah. just for point of clarification, yeah. we did receive the TRS rates today that that we do compare with right and we we come still, out and and I acknowledge oh, no, that yeah. I acknowledge our, our yeah. health insurance we, we rates are good. still fabulous and I'm not negating that at all it's just I think a more holistic view looking at it all voting on it all at the same time personally I think would be something I'd like to see okay, okay. any other questions mr. Hudson one one more uh, going back to the stipends how how are the stipends determined just in general how do you come up with the numbers for a for a stipend for it we do basically the same thing we do with um, salaries we look at surrounding districts competitive districts and what they're offering do a stipend survey with surrounding districts and make sure we're competitive in those areas mm -hmm. and it's like it's very similar to salaries you'll see something bubble up one year and we'll address it and and we may be a little higher than somebody else in some other area, so we continue to monitor those. Did that answer your question, or is it more basic? Like, how do you set, how do you, how do you determine that a, a, a bilingual teacher, I, I don't know if that or whatever, uh, gets two thousand dollars? I mean, it, it's the amount of work involved versus a drill team leader gets five thousand or forty-five hundred or whatever it is. I'm yeah. not, I'm not quoting the amount. How, how, is that is that your question? How they come up with those amounts? Yeah, it was. I think it's pertinent to the amount of work involved mm -hmm. above and beyond the classroom time. Well, yeah. If if we polled all of them, obviously they'd all say that they work extremely hard, and, and I and I get that. <laughs> and I'm not questioning the manner. I'm just I'm just out, out of curiosity because the numbers are they are different, and I'm not questioning those numbers or the validity of them. I'm just curious how we come up with it, and and that makes sense that you go to the area around and make sure we're competitive. And I, I suppose I'm going to make an assumption here that um, you'd look at salary and stipend, put it together, and see if that's a competitive income for that particular person in our area. Yes. Is, that, is that fair to assume? I think that's fair. And, and the bilingual is actually bilingual stipend is actually a great example 
because that's fluctuated greatly yes. over the years. And to be competitive, that's why we... It's a hiring tool. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh -huh. That's what it is. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Thank you. Good. I have a question, uh, a motion, yep. and a second. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like so. Thank you very much. Uh, go straight to financial reports, Dr. Stockton. Dr. Rice. Rice. Uh, here this evening to present the financial statements for the district for the month of May. Uh, once again, these statements will include our general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we're going to look at this evening is our balance sheet. The balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances for the district. Uh, each month, we always like to uh, take a look at our cash and investments. And once again, we're going to concentrate on our general fund. And in that fund, we had cash on hand of $500 bank deposits of 41,000, investments in our pools of 138 million, investments less than one year, those are safe kept at U.S. Bank at 57 million, and our longer term investments that are managed by TCG Investment Advisors, 50,671,000, for total cash and investments of $246,291,000. The next statement will we'll look at is our income statement. The income statement has our revenues and expenditures and fund balances. Our revenues are broken down into three categories. That is local and intermediate sources, our state program revenues, and federal program revenues. And if we look at the detail behind our local and intermediate sources, you can see the detail for each fund where those uh, revenues are generated. And we can also look at the year-to-date expenditures by major category for each of the funds. And once again, in, in general fund, the majority of that is in payroll. Our projected uh, fund balance in the general fund, we're looking at a projected increase of $222,000. Debt service, we're looking at an increase of $5.3 million. Child nutrition, a slight increase of $341,000. Our 2015 bond referendum status, uh, we've currently encumbered and expended $95 million. Um, we have an estimate to complete of $398,000, million, leaving us with a projected forecast of $492 million. Uh, that leaves us currently with contingency of $27.3 million. And that gives us the grand total program of $520,245,000. Self-funded insurance, uh, total revenues for the year, $30,272,000. Expenses, $30,437,000. For revenues under expenses for the first time this year of $165,000. Our Wellness Center participation for the month of May at Oak Ridge Center, we had 382 visits and Conroe 101 for a total of 483 visits, uh, giving us a total of 5,589 on the year. I would like to say that May is the last month of H2U running our clinic. We have now switched to yeah. Memorial Hermann, and I think Dr. Sharples and, and Tiffany and, and Paula would say that, that we think we're going to have great things coming from Memorial Hermann. And I'd like to give it a a shout out to those ladies for getting that clinic up and running. They did an outstanding job getting that thing going. Shout out. <laughs> Turned a three month project over in 30 days, so they did a great job. And now our investments for the month. Par value at the end of May was $430 million. The wham of our pools is one day, yielding 55 basis points. The WAM of our short-term investments that we safe keep at U.S. Bank is 101 days, yielding almost 70 basis points. And the WAM of our investments that are longer term at TCG Investment Advisors is 581 days, yielding 96 basis points. So the WAM of our combined portfolio is 72 days, yielding almost 61 basis points. Our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, is yielding 30 basis points. And thank you. Any questions? Good job. Thank Thank you. You. Quick question, I, I, and I may have missed it, but I, I'm sure I did. Uh, the, the tax collections, are we on pace? Oh, yes, I can, uh, I can go back. I 
I just want to see where we are. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just slightly behind where we were last year, but we feel confident we're going to reach the 100% mark. So we're right at 98 and a third percent. So that's good. So, you know, we, we feel pretty confident we'll, we'll reach the 100%. So. Thank you. Can I, can I just ask a general <laughs> question? Uh -huh. um, I think you and your office and your staff do an excellent job in your presentation and, and all the numbers that we see every month. And um, I, I think sometimes we don't, because we see how it appears how great of a condition we're in. And I'm asking you, I guess, from y'all's department, if you were describing or characterizing how we're doing, it seems like we're very, very healthy. We, we are very healthy. If you compare us really to any of our peer districts, I mean, you can look at our tax rate, just all of our indicators, um, you will see that we're just outperforming everyone. We, we're going to announce our Texas Smart Schools Award. We're one of three districts that received five stars, five years, six consecutive years. Six. So six. just one of three <laughs> in the whole state. Yeah. So we are in very good shape. Well, and I know, you know, we don't, I know y'all don't, you know, as far as achieving excellent awards, you know, we don't always recognize the hard work that y'all do. But here at the end of the year, the end of the school year anyway, you know, I just wanted to say, yeah, I look at all the numbers, and it just it, it appears that we're in excellent shape leading into uh, yeah, leading the next four years. Yeah, interesting yeah. session. We are we are in very good shape, and and what our finance department does such a great job is accounting for every dollar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, everyone pitches in to make sure we're performing at the level we perform, um, but we are in good shape. We are in good shape from a tax rate stand uh, standpoint, putting money away in the bank, which. Is, is a very good standpoint. You never know what's going to happen in the legislative session. Yeah. They could change the funding system. Um, but we are in, we're in very good shape moving forward. Great job, guys. Great. Thank, you. Job. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice team. Thank you. Team Rice. Team Rice. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Motion Second. to adjourn. Second. Second.